I know on camera these things get us into trouble every time because people say you're standing too close to the people you're interviewing <laughs> I just I don't want to put this thing in perspective if I take two steps back you take one step forward one step forward we're in a triangle yes. and we still keep our physical distance yes, yes. Lisa Look what what happened to us in this world and in the West Boundary. We were planning this <laughs> massive jubilee, big party, and we knew on the block. So for us, we thought this is if we ever wanted to see a party, this is going to be the one. What now? <laughs> <laughs> I can see I caught you out there. You know what? That's exactly the answer we get from people. We don't really know what has happened in the last few weeks around this. I think that. We have our president of the board here, Alana Fraser, and I think that she represents the association and I think she is best to speak to that. No, that's passing the buck as it goes. And that's exactly how you do it. So, Alana, first time on camera with the Cowboys. So, the buck's been passed, okay? Yes. Who are you going to pass that? <laughs> I guess no one. Um, we have been... Uh, we've been stumbling a lot. Uh, this last a few weeks because uh, what we do is uh, we put on a fair. That's our biggest celebration. It is the biggest representation of our whole community and communities. And we're not seeing that big window that we can do the big party, especially because it's the 75th Diamond Jubilee. There's some very specific things we need to keep in mind when we go forward, apart from the rules changing on us all the time. I mean. Why not have a party for the obvious reasons? Just walk me through why uh, we're directed not to do that. Uh, well, we are asking five to 10,000 people to come on a couple of acres, bump elbows, rub against each other, collect on the, the, uh, in front of the stage, on the bleachers, watching the show, the steers and lambs. Um, we're doing exactly what we're being told not to do right now. Um, and that is the fun of the fair, right? Is that we all get to gather and watch the kids show and adults. Many businesses have closed over this period and made adjustments now to be able to open up until we can have the big party. What are some of the possibilities that you're contemplating? I think that we're looking at hopefully being able to do something on a small scale that doesn't bring in the five to 10,000 people from all over the place to perhaps have a smaller community celebration, get together, just keeping it small, keeping it local and seeing if we can pull that off. It, it all depends on the regulations and, and the messages that we receive from the health officer. And money. <laughs> and, and money. I, I want to bring the money thing up oh, yeah. because yeah. event organizers all over at the moment are seeing are being devastated. I mean, I think some of the some of the, the the parties that you wanted to include in this year's celebrations cancelled because they're saying we're not doing any events this year because we cannot afford to keep staff on or schedules that keeps on being changed. So that said, though, the fair that you're doing, that's very much a community-driven initiative. It's not about the big money, is it? It's not about the big money, but. The money we, you, we get at FAIR, that's what drives the operation year long. You can't just stop cutting the grass because you don't have money. So all of the events that would go on in the summer, like the weddings, the family reunions, the rock and kettle rodeo, all of those events, the rental fees they pay, they are put straight back into the property to maintain it for, for FAIR. Our, our biggest fundraiser of the year is FAIR. We have none of that this year. There's no weddings. They've all postponed or cancelled to next year. The rodeos postponed to next year. So we've lost that revenue and we've lost that community connection as well. Those are events that you know a lot of people come to and they look forward to it every year. So yes, it's been a big financial hit, but it's also been a, 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 an emotional connection that's been lost as well. 
and I'm not sure which is worse. I feel like crying with you. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I feel like crying with you because so far in all the episodes that we put through, our goal was to try and keep this message positive. Yes, we want to keep people safe. Uh, we need to survive. We need to get out on the other side because it doesn't help you being healthy and poor and then getting sick because you're poor and, and, you, and you can't look after yourself. But the, the bottom line is try and keep it positive. Try and focus on the opportunity. Um, are we going to have that party eventually? Alana, oh, yeah. give us some hope. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you look back to the history of uh, we are celebrating 75 years or we're to be celebrating 75 years this year. That's on this property. The fair was going before that. The fair was going before World War I. Those traits from those people, that determination, that sense of fun, the love of this area, that started then. And so I have... I have all faith that we're going to get creative. We're going to put our heels down and dig in. We're going to we're we're going to move forward and figure a way out of this. Absolutely, we need our big party. And I guess the message for this whole video is resilience. The fact that this entire boundary area has seen whatever the world can throw at it. We've seen. You know, rises Lens, and falls, fires. we've seen fires, yeah. we've seen devastation, we've seen riches amongst everything, I would say the biggest riches we've discovered ourselves here is that sense of community and the fact that people look after each other, sort of old school, sort of farming community. Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you a positive in all of this. We, we struggled to come up with a positive, <laughs> <laughs> but um, you were here for last year's fair. You know the mud fest that happened at the end of fair with pulling all of the tractors and trailers and food trucks out. Well, our field took a beating. So the positive in this for me is we've got a year to get it back up to snuff. Nobody's on the grounds. We've got reseeding. Um, it's going to look better than ever. So that is my positive on this is we've got time to make it look fantastic for our big celebration. So let's take that time. Let's take the time here on the boundary and all the businesses that we've interviewed here on the West and say, take the time, decide what's important, know that we're resilient, and we're going to see this one through. <laughs>